Well, in the interest of customer service, I feel compelled to say once again, thank you so much for choosing Open Up Yoga Teacher Training. I really am having fun and I hope you are too. And again, I commend you guys for being such champs at small group practice, just kind of turned loose. Did you have the experience where maybe you were a little bit stuck, but one of your friends had offering of help? Mm -hmm. Did that resonate, Alicia? Yeah, that was really helpful. Like, we got, kind of like taught each other. There you go, you taught each other. Now this doesn't happen by accident. It is a testament to the high vibration of everyone in this room, okay? I'm serious. It's funny how sometimes Facebook memories gives you something that went down a couple, three, four years ago. The funniest thing happened. I literally was like, wow, I got to tell them this isn't normal for me to be able to leave the room and for everyone to step up and help each other. And then sure enough, I'm like goofing around on my phone, Facebook memories from four years ago. The single most heinous, painful team picture was on my Facebook memories from four years ago. It was session 12. They shall remain nameless, but I learned a lot about <laughs> what's going on with people actively pulling for each other. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to say you guys are actively pulling for each other. I get this feeling you genuinely care about each other learning about yoga as much, maybe more than your own needs and your own goals and your own path. And that's what makes a teacher. Okay, thanks for listening. It was a spooky kind of thing. I was like, wow, this is going so good. It's not like way back in the day. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. All right, now um, I wanna make sure you're uh, comfortable where you're sitting. You know, This is a good time to have back support sometimes as well as to be able to be on your mat. So feel good about scooting your mat against the wall in step two if there are times where you're sitting down in between being up and active. Um, we left off pretty much at the wide-legged stuff yesterday. So I figure we could pick it back up at the Hatha wide-legged separate leg stretching forward bend. Let's say the words Dandayamana. Dandayamana. Bib hawk. Tipada, bib, hak, tipada, paschimottanasana, paschimottanasana. Let's break it down. Dandayamana means what? What does dandayamana mean? Yeah, I'm standing. Bib, hak, tipada is telling me that I'm standing, but that my, my legs are, they're wide out. The west side of my body that I'm stretching in that posture has a name. The direction for west in Sanskrit word is Pashima. We talked about a Pashmina scarf. That's the nice cape thing, kind of like a, our version of shawl, that covers the west side of your body. Isn't that fun? Pashmina scarf is telling you it's, it, it's for the west side of your body. So lest you become confused and wear it on the front. That's a different kind of scarf. That's a tube top. <laughs> so Paschimottanasana, what does Ottanasana mean? It's kind of like Uttanasana. It's kind of like Utita. What does Ottanasana mean? Ota. When you see two letter T's together in Uta, Ota. Yeah, they're pulling apart. It's stretching. You're stretching. And I like to think, imagine two little letter T's kind of like pulling away from each other, getting a little stretch. That's, that's just my mnemonic device for remembering. Because you'll see it in Parjvotanasana, pyramid. Uttanasana, forward fold, right? Utita, as in Utita, Hastaparangustasana. So be patient with your learning about Sanskrit, but be watching your pattern recognition skills are going to pick up and see patterns. And that's going to be a good thing to hang your hat on. But the point is this. It's materially different than prasarita padottanasana. There's again the otanasana. Prasarita padottanasana from power yoga has a whole different goal. So if I'm in DBP, the hatha one, what, what is this posture all about? What am I doing? Stretching. 
stretching. Well, the stretching is happening. Yeah, but your, uh, biceps are yes, yeah. your biceps are working to do what verb? Pull. 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 Yeah, there's nothing passive in Dande Manabib Haktapada Paschimutanasana. It is all work all the time. And do you guys feel when you're in this pose, massaging of your internal organs? Yes! Yes! I'm glad to hear someone else does too. Because all throughout my life doing Hatha class, I'm like, dude, this is the wind removing pose. I gotta be careful. Because it massages the internal organs. In your anatomy book that we're going to play with this afternoon at four, we're going to look at the picture of the skeleton on page five where all of the organs are shown. Because in yoga, we're like, hey, which organs are being implicated here? Well, if it's in the peritoneal cavity of your trunk, all of them, all of them. All of them. All the organs are implicated in every posture where we're saying this is rinsing your organs. This is massaging your organs. This is benefiting your organs. You're like, well, which ones? All of them. Because in the peritoneal cavity of your core, they're all there. The only organs that are not there are your kidneys. They are retroperitoneal. They live outside of the peritoneal cavity. So that's a fun fact. You know that when we are implicating organs, it's all of them. So in DBP, because you're looking at the floor, because you're using your arms to press into the toe pads, to pull your face down, and you're continue to maintain what priority of your low back? Pelvic what? Sure. Tilt. Tilt, you want to preserve the curve, your lumbar curve, right guys? Because remember we, we were watching unsupported forward flexion, remember? When the back was rounded, we don't want that. And, and when your back is rounded, what's the good way to make it straight or flatter? What's the first verb your body part you want to tell me? Yeah, bend your elbows. Now should my weight be in the heels or where? Toes. Yes, shift your work forward to the where? Toe pads, yeah, balls of your feet. But the 14-year-old boy inside of me is always like, balls, balls. <laughs> pull, pull. Now, if the elbows go out, what's the problem? What's the problem if the elbows are out? Um, You're not pulling. You don't do bicep curls like this, right? You do bicep curls like this. Not like this, like this. So when you're in this posture, if your elbows are out, what else is going on in my upper shoulders? Shrugged. They're jacked up, they're shrugged up, they're shrugged. And there's no yoga posture under the sun that asks you to do this. You walked in that way, right? <laughs> we're here to do this. So a lot of what we're watching out for in forward folds is students getting super motivated about pull, Oh, look at my shoulder shrugs. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I in a state conducive to relaxation? No, because that's where stress is held. But check it, right? Before, after, before, after. And you get to this correction when elbows are touching the shins more, okay? So this one is a very active pose, but it is the classic themes of Hatha, which are what and what? Compression and extension. What is extending in this pose? What's extending? Your spine. Yes, your spine. Coccyx to neck, coccyx to heel, right? That's, that's the standard script of, of Beaker. And then my legs. Yeah, they're getting a lot. Now, if our friends are hypermobile and we're worried about their leg going beyond 180s, give me some verb your body part to fix that. There you go. Bend your knees a little bit. That's perfect. And then pull is the verb to get the job done. So what's, what is compressing? If I'm extending my spine, coccyx to neck, coccyx to heels, what is getting compressed? Big time. Big time. Pizza night the day before? I feel that in this pose. I got nobody to blame but myself saying yes to pizza. I feel it right here. I don't know if you do, but like that's what we want to sell to our students. You are rinsing your organs, not just improving 
your range of motion in your hammies and your spine. Now, now check how different this is to prasarita padottanasana from power yoga, okay? In prasarita, who knows how I'm getting in because remember this is sequencing. Every pose is linked to the next pose. But for our purposes, since it's hatha, we're coming in like this or we could come in like this. Shoulder rinse, right? Big breath in, a big breath out. Now, now what's deal with this pose here that's different from what I just did? Yeah, no right, no we're hanging out. Nothing's yeah. being pulled, nothing's active, really. Yeah. Uh, if I choose to do shoulder wrists, I'm gonna honor my range of motion. I've got tighter shoulders, friends, so you can see how my arms don't flop over my head, like some of you guys. I wanna give you a hint for friends who have tight shoulders. We don't want them to hurt themselves, so can you see my hands okay? Okay, now the thumbs, the back of my thumbs, like I'm like if I was gonna bump a volleyball, that, that move, I'm gonna place those on my sacrum, okay? And then watch, here's the shoulders up, back, and down. And then I'm gonna hang out. Now, now why am I not looking at the floor? Okay. Yeah, do you, do you, are you happy with the shape of my neck right now? Because no. remember, everything's a variation on what? Everything's just what pose decorated. Mountain. Mountain, yeah. So you want the nice long neck with the convex curve of my neck, like always. So this one, what's, what does it do for us? If the other one is about adding strength and rinsing the organs and getting compression extension, what's this one about? Relaxing and relaxing or, right, or working, right, right, into our arm balance inversion opportunity. So friends who are going to stay are going to stay. Friends who are going to play are going to play, right? And so that's what's fun about this all levels opportunity is that everybody's got something to do. You have a choice to encourage the shoulder rinse. You have a choice to encourage just relaxing. And where do the hands go? It doesn't really matter. They do different things. What if the hands are out here? What does that do? Oh, it sure does. What is it stretching? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like to call this expression lazy dog. Because it's kind of like all the benefits of down dog. It's good. Yeah, yeah but, at, but it's, it's, oh, I love lazy dog. Like, I cheat all the time if my wrists are hurting in power, like this morning. I'm sure Brie noticed. Yeah. <laughs> she had nothing better to do in class but, like, pay attention to me. <laughs> so, I'm so self-absorbed. When everybody's in down dog suffering, I'll sneak my feet out beyond the width of the mat, shorten the stance, and then hang out in lazy dog and call it a good... So anyhow, yes, you may wish to encourage folks to restore and chill out or have inversion fun. We could also do a twist. Um, you would take your opposite ankle, right? And sweep your top hand high, right? Now, this is a place to stay or a half bind. Can you guys all see the shoulder shrug here? If, if I'm here, if I'm here, do you see the shoulder shrug? Yeah, this, okay, and then if I'm here, do you see the shoulder shrug? No. Yeah, uh, come on in if you want to and get closer to see. I'm, t I'm here to tell you that when you see students with one arm up in a prasarita padottanasana, whether their hand is here, whether their hand is here, whether their hand is here, look at what's going on here. Are you happy with how this looks? It's kind of jacked up, isn't it? But a half bind, Watch, you cannot jack up your shoulder shrug in a half bind. It's an instant way to get everybody chillaxed here. So today, we got a chance to do that in Vidal's class. We did a wide-legged twist, and then he offered the, the half bind, and I was all over that. So this is an option in your a sequence. If you choose to do a twist, you would just say, bring your hand to your ankle, right? Either one. Sweep your second hand high, take a half bind, back of your hand finds the small of your back, thumb leads the way. Be sure you say thumb leads the way, because watch, you say put your hand on your back, here's what you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's universal. So like everybody, half bind, the thumb, yeah, let your thumb lead the way. When the thumb leads the way, you can't mess it up. So anyway, it's a good time, it relaxes you. Again, it's a place to recharge or to do an inversion, right? And then we come on up. And I threw in high triangle for a transition. And then what's next after this? <gasps> Trikona. Trikonasana. 
Trikonasana, right? So you already have the legs out, and then you got in and out of your, your DB. Let's pretend we're on the first set. So you got in and out of your Dande Manabib Haktapada Paschimottanasana, right? You came out, right? And then identify your wet foot toes. The right foot probably, because if we're all facing that way, bend your knee, right? And create your lunge. Now, what's the number one thing we're worried about in this pose? Yeah, do you see what's going on here, guys? And here's a, a cry for help. When the student's got their foot in the middle. The, uh, it's so cute too, because they got nowhere to go because they've run out of room back here. So that's, that's something to watch out for. But yes, to get people simply into your trikonasana, it's one foot toes, bend the knee. And now say I was too shallow and my knee was beyond the toes and I was hurting my knee joint. The back leg makes the correction the easiest. Why is that? Why would you not goof around with the front leg that has all the load on it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a recipe to hurt the knee. So if we turn the foot out and they get in their lunge and they're here, it's a great way to just, I put it in top line dialogue. Take your lunge. For more, or for a deeper pose, and I'll just do this. For a deeper pose, scoot your back leg back. Yes. So you're saying take your lunge, but to me, like, I think it like, yeah, because crescent lunge, this is the definition of lunging. It's a verb. No, we don't use warrior two in Hatha. We say to pivot your foot, take your lunge. Yeah, it's the verb of this shape, take your lunge. But I know you're thinking lunges are this, and they are. This is lunges. We're going to have so much fun with crescent lunge. It's your bread and butter posture. You got to get some more on the mat safe. Crescent lunge is the way to get there. So that's just the verb. Live with it. <laughs> and that's uh, the, 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 take your lunch. And so, yeah, if you feel like it's going to serve your students to say, hey, guys, yeah, it's warrior two. You know, that just might be effective. Use your back leg to make the correction. And now we were learning about a lot of people's knees go where? In. Yeah, toward the big toe, because why? Yeah, in the VMO. So I'm just trying to sell you on this, because this, this, part three of Utkatasana does strengthen these, these guys. Yep, sweep your back leg back. Now, now, how would you get me where you want me to be if I'm here? And then back. Yeah, yeah, see? People are here, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta be here. What's the difference? No center. <laughs> yeah, because look, I'm gonna be all off. So. Let's be clear, I know this is a little confusing because this posture is a cousin to who? Side angle, huh? But they do different things. Side angle is, again, in power yoga, mostly for sequencing. Because we're gonna be here. And then maybe we're here, right? And then maybe we're here, right? And then maybe we're here. And then maybe we're here. And maybe we're here and we'll flow to the second side. And again, we'll be here. And maybe we're here. And I forget what I did next. Did I do a pyramid? And then I, yeah, woo. And then we're here. And then maybe we're here, we're here, we're flowing. So do you see how the goal of Parjvokanasana, Kona means angle, side angle pose, Parjvokanasana, is, yeah, option one, elbow. Option two, here. But trikonasana, compression extension, we want to make sure to not touch the floor. We want to make sure to not go below the elbow. We want to be here. The biggest, most important secret you can learn about this posture and being happy in it and being stable in it is to put all your work toward the inside of your front heel and all the work to the outside of your back heel. Try it. Let's come up into your wide legged tri uh, high triangle facing the prop wall. 
with your parallel feet, palms to meet. Drop your arms parallel to the floor. Identify your right foot toes, pivot them to the front of the room. Take a deep breath, take your lunge. For a deeper posture, sweep your back leg back to make the correction. Nice. Now everybody, flip your palms, look at your back thumb, tilt. That's the only verb to get into this posture. Tilt. So place your elbow knee, chin shoulder, eye thumb. Bend your knee a lot, good. Press into the heel more, soften your toes. And now, straighten both of your arms. Have your top arm straight up to the ceiling, like a 12 o'clock. Top arm, yes, higher, up, perfect. Now, please, focus your effort to roll to the inside of your heel. Just a little bit, yeah, just a little. Only you know you're doing it. It's not a big move. Focus your back of your back heel to the door. So, medial aspect of your heel, the one towards the prop wall, dig it down. Back leg, lateral aspect, the outer part of the heel, roll it back. Change, come up, high triangle, straighten your leg, parallel your feet, touch your palms. Okay, second side. Identify your left foot toes, spin them to the back of the room, bend your knee, take your lunge, open your palms, help your back leg back to get deeper, root through your front heel, flip your palms, look at your back thumb, and tilt. Place your elbow, knee, chin, shoulder, eye, thumb connections. Now get organized, straighten your arms, straighten your arms, send your back leg back, deeper, more, more. If your towel is slippery, you're gonna get more out of this. Send your back leg back, bend your knee more, bend your knee, bend your knee, bend your knee. You're not listening, now you're listening. Now take your inner heel arch and roll it down. Your back leg, take your outer heel point and nail it down. Find a round of breath. Change, come up, keep your lunge, straight your leg, high triangle, parallel your feet, palms to meet, hands to hips. Thank you. Pause and rest where you are. Nope. 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 Yes. Now, if you're here, guess what? Guess why I'm freaking out about it? If you're here and not here, you're gonna get tired faster. You're gonna use more work, not less. The secret of being in this pose happily is a deeper lunge with more pressure on your heel. You will be in your muscles. If you're going shallow thinking you're saving your energy, you're wrong. You are gonna use more energy and it's gonna be torquing in your joint. Come up, hands to hips. Take a deep breath, exhale and fold. So hang out upside down and chill out. I will too. And if your mat is slippery, I'm promising you, the best thing you can learn is to practice on ice. And if your mat feels like ice, that's even better. You want a strong core, you want toned legs, you want to be strong. When you have a slippery towel, that, that can help. You can move your slippery towel and have just the mat. It's your choice. Bring your hands to hips, high triangle. Lift your chest, chin, and eyes. And now touch your palms, keep your feet where they are. Drop your arms, let's take a second set. Identify your right foot toes, pivot them to the front, bend your knee, find your lunge. Send your back leg back, look at your back thumb and tilt your body. Now here's the thing. There's a conversation going on between your knee and elbow, but that's not just the whole story because you don't want to twist below the belly button, do you? No, no. So press your inner heel down. Press your back foot's outer heel down. Find a round of breath. Change, come up, keep your lunge. Straight your leg, parallel your feet, high triangle, palms to meet. Second side, send your left foot toes to the back of the room, bend your knee a lot. Drop your palms, slip your back leg back to make any correction, flip your palms, look at your back thumb and tilt your body. Elbow knee, chin, shoulder, eye, thumb, hold. Now relax that which needs not working. Shoulders, jaw, face. Identify your front lunge. Press a little more to the heel and really float your toes. Raise your top arm higher so you're flat against the imaginary wall. 
please straighten both arms. I'm saying that because that's the pose. And if you're resting, that's fine. Come out of the posture. But if you're in the posture, be in the posture. We're here. One more round of breath. Come up, keep your lunge. Straight your leg. Parallel your feet. Step to the left. Feet together, palms touch. Arms relax beside you. Mountain pose. All right, let's take some notes. What page is your triangle on for you to be putting some verbs and body parts on there? Okay, find page 158 and write verbs and body parts. You must! There's a ton at the front desk just for you guys. T-R-I, tree. What does T-R-I mean in Sanskrit? Tree, T-R-I. What would you guess based on English? Triangle. Triangle. What does the tree stand for? Three. Three. There are three triangles in this posture. When you're in this posture, there are three triangles. Can you, can you imagine that the whole pose from the top hand apex is the top of a triangle and the legs are making the bottom? Does that, does that sound about right? The second triangle in Trikonasana is when you have your elbow and knee connection. Do you see a triangle under this arm? It's a little tiny one. It's just a little tiny one. And then the third triangle in this posture is your heel to your inner thigh. So do you see like right here to here, that makes a three angle thing too? That's part of the hint of the posture. It's part of why it's different than this. It's part of why it's different than this. It's part of why it's different than this. Come up, keep your lunge. Second side. So when you bend your knee, and again, if you're shallow here thinking you're saving your energy, that's not true. When you get the deep bend and you press into the heel, then all the good muscles of your inner thigh line are working. You straighten out your back leg a lot, it's working. And with the elbow to the knee, again, there's the little triangle here. Here's a triangle, if I'm deep, see if I'm not deep enough, am I making a triangle with this front leg? Not even close. The triangle here is this to here, closes the one, two, three. So the top apex is your hand, your two feet make the bottom part, and it kind of looks like the Michael Jordan logo. Doesn't it remember from back in the day? There's nothing out here. There's nothing here. There's nothing here until it's our second set. So first set, just like how the first set is Dandemana, Bibhaktipada, Paschimottanasana, the first set is straight up classic tree konasana. Come up, high triangle, parallel your feet, palm to meet. Because why is it important to turn your foot in, guys? Yeah, and, and wh why is it good to pivot on your heel? Yeah, not your knee, because your knee doesn't want to do what? Doesn't want to rotate. So high triangle is our transition to get you here. You're here, you're here. Second side. So you identify the foot, you find your lunge, you deepen as needed, you flip, you look, you tilt, and you get low, drop. See the hip? This is basically this. It's that low. It's that low. It's that low. It's not here. Like, wishful thinking, huh? Don't we love power triangle? You know, a lot of students are here. Oh, Trikonasana, I got this. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. 
I'm sorry. It's not your new life. It's just triangle. We will be here 40 seconds. You're going to be fine. But did you die? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Change. Second set, now let's, whoa. Why are we sequencing this on the second set after all that mess? Why? You're tired, right? In alignment with Ahimsa, we sequence this to give you a damn break. But if you're pits and you're like, oh, I'm just getting warmed up. That got me all jacked. Well then have at it, Haas. Just wait for that second set, right? So. Now we're coming in here for the second set. It kind of is this pose. Because what are we offering on the second set of triangle? Blinds and voids. Right? Stay here. Call it a day. Right? Half bind. Got your elbow down. I'll get you a beverage. It's all good. You can totally be here. Full bind. We reach under to do what? Yeah, if it's available. Now if you can find your full bind, then what are we doing? Why are we stepping this way? Um, yes, because what's what am I looking at if I'm in the class? I'm looking at the mirror. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if you have flyers in the room for whom it is available and interesting, and you know they want to hang out, you could do your your bound standing splits. Say the bind is not available today, right? Better to take free bird than to jack up your shoulder, right guys? If the bind is like, eh, we're, almost, we're almost there. I've broken a nail trying to get into this pose where maybe I wasn't as lotioned up or maybe it was pizza night. I've grabbed like to force it and two silicone nails or whatever those are made out of pop it off. So then that's what we do free bird. I'm gonna catch the heel, step, so that, and however many hops it takes, right guys? Right, right? <laughs> however many hops. And then you stand up. And then from here, look, you got the heel in the midline. You can choose to keep the heel there or you can flip the grip, right? And then this, this is a great way to do bind, I'm sorry, bird, if the bind just, you know, isn't happening. Yeah, we could get you a towel. Yeah, we could hand you a strap. But this is power yoga. You know, it was enough to get you to class with a yoga mat towel and water. You start adding all that extra gear. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a story. So yeah, we have props. I was Iyengar trained, so you didn't do anything without props. But in, in this kind of milieu, it's kind of nice to just go on the fly. So that's why we codified Freebird so that you don't need a strap, you don't need a towel, you just need a chance to bring us all to the midline and then, and then, and then there. So yes, question? Yep. Okay, so let's play with Freebird. Uh, let's all please come back to your wide-legged stance and if you've never tried that option, this is a good time to goof around with it. I love being able to offer this to people with shorter arms, right? People with shorter arms, people with bigger muscles, right? A lot of men who have very large biceps, it's very hard for them to bind, but they wanna do the groovy stuff too. So if it's available to you guys, take your legs right back out, identify your right foot, toes, bend your knee, drop into your lunge, let your back leg make any correction, flip your palms, tilt your body. Now a half bind is available to everyone. So feel good about putting your left your, your right elbow on your right knee. Now let's take a half bind. Back of your hand finds the small of your back. And then deeper lunge if you can. Let's just all do free bird. Hold your ankle with a lion's mouth grip. Kind of like when we go into Utita Hasta Panangusasana. So take it from the underhand position. Yes, like that. So put your hand in behind. Yes, like that. Yep, 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 yes. Yes, 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 consensus. Now look at the front foot. Come, hang on, hang on. Come to your tiptoes of your back foot. So like a crescent lunge expression. Yeah, now you've got somewhere to go safely. So step your back foot. However many steps it takes, it's totally cool. Now hold, look in the mirror first. Yeah, that's gonna set your center of gravity. 
Now, gentle, if it's available to you, stand up. And feel free to hold your calf instead of the, the heel. Feel free to hold your pant leg if that's better for you. Feel free to switch your grip so you're holding the inside. That's option two. Yeah, everyone raise your left arm high if you don't want to keep the bind. See if that helps your balance. And then some of you may wish to kick forward, but everyone's standing. So isn't this nice? It gets you out of side angle. Yeah, see, and some of us extend the leg. Some of we could hold the calf. Yeah, see, Jenny, it's like you're getting some good bicep work when you're holding the calf like that. Change. Step your front foot down. Come back, meet your binds. Binds, high triangle. Parallel your feet, palms to meet. Yep, second side. Identify your left foot toes, spin them back, bend your knee, and take your lunge. Open your palms, slip your back foot as you need, and tilt your body. All right, now chillax for a second with your left elbow on your left knee just for kicks, because we can do that, we can hang out. And breathe and chill. Half bind, take your top hand to the small of your back, thumb leads the way, hold. Everyone, look at your left foot. Now, take the lion's mouth grip behind your heel from the inside as you did, perfect. Look at your front foot, this is where you wanna put your eyeballs. Now come onto the tiptoes of your back foot, because we don't want to hurt your knee. See, that was perfect how you came onto the tiptoes. And then step two feet beside each other. Now this is different because there's no mirror, so lift your face first. Just like every balancing activity, eyes on the horizon will help you center. Then gather, look at the wall. And we're ladies, we carry too many packages in from the car all the time, right? And there's a kid on our back maybe, and we're making a phone call. Raise your right arm high if that helps you. See what you prefer, friends. You could stay or play. Extend your leg, hold your calf, what have you. Keep the bind, whatever you like best. Look at that. Isn't that fun? That's beautiful, friends. Look at that. Change. Step your foot down first to get grounded. Meet your buddies in binds. Come on up, keep your lunge. High triangle, straight your leg, parallel your feet, palms to meet. And let's take a clean step to the left, feet together, palms touch. Arms relax beside you, mountain pose, just to get you out of the pose. Okay, thanks guys. Um, let's get some water and, and uh, you have dialogue on how to get into bird. You have it and you also have it in voice memo that I re-emailed you during your small group time, but I have something to tell you about bird that's really important. So let's take a water break and then when we are back, we'll talk about that. But just before that, any questions or thoughts? It, what did you like, free bird? Did you like it? You could stand up. Got you out of side angle pose. Thoughts? I feel like the other bird is easier for me. What do you think that's about? Is it the longer arms, you lucky, lucky woman? I can grip myself better. Uh -huh. Yeah, see? But face. isn't it neat that you could tell a friend who isn't as lucky yeah. as you with the arms? You're like, oh, babe, check it. You hold your foot. And again, you could keep the calf. Like, that could be something to hold on to. Like, that's a big deal. You get a lot of bicep work with this underhand grip. You could, you know, they could hold the top of the leg. You know, a lot, and everyone's wearing pants. You could hold the pants. I got no problem with that. Just, it's neat to be able to give somebody the option if they want so they're not relegated a lifetime of here while everyone else is goofing around. So thanks for listening. It was a TT that actually taught me that when I had gained about 40 pounds and I felt like I lost my best friend not being able to take a bind in a bird of paradise. I like really defined my practice on that move, which was my fault to stray that way because if you hang your hat on your physical abilities, you don't get to keep them. So you know, you're gonna really suffer. So I was just so pumped. I was like, I get to do bird now. Like I was really excited because I thought that wasn't going to be me for a while. So I can have bread and bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I need to tell you something important. In this posture, bird of paradise, if the goal is that there's a mirror there and you have them getting into this, looking at the mirror that way, then, then what did I do different just now to get into it? What did I do di different? Right, I put it in the middle of the mat. So you'll notice how some places you teach have mirrors on different walls. And sometimes we'll be in a side angle pose and we'll be in 
this plane of motion where we're very stacked up shoulders, right? Right? Stacked up shoulders, right? And you would step in the middle of the mat because if you want to look in the mirror there, right? So the, my point is this. This is all coronal plane. When we talk about planes of motion next week more, it'll make more sense. We, in this, in this sequence, we have the mirror that way. So we're stepping to the front of the mat, getting organized first, and then, and then standing up. So I don't know if that occurred to you. Hey, how come we're not staying flat? How come we're coming to a crescent lunge sort of leg and stepping to the front? So did that, was that on your mind at all? Okay, not to worry. Because there's a lot of times you guys are surprised because you're like, hey, wait, why are you asking me to go that way? I've always been told I'm not eligible for bird unless I'm flat. Well, yeah, if I want you facing that way, but if I want you this way, we got to get into the sagittal plane squared up, squared away. So it's, it's a different plane of motion. That'll come in handy later. Okay, you guys are an easy crowd. I know where my fights are at. It's about that time where they start fighting me on bird about where we're looking. Because you guys get busted sometimes if you're collapsing in bird. I'm not asking you to collapse in bird. I'm asking you to head that way. And P.S. That bind is super nice for other poses. <laughs> Should it become available to you? Example, pyramid. Two straight legs, chin to shin, idea could have a bind. Warrior one, coming into a humble warrior. You know, usually we're here. Some people are down there and they're like, hey, well, while I'm down here, might as well bind. <laughs> what else am I gonna do? So, so yeah. All right, okay, questions about Trikonasana, questions about Parshvokanasana, questions about Bird of Paradise. Are we okay? Okay, ready for pyramid? We kind of got to it yesterday. In the sequence, when you come out of your second side of bird and you come up to high triangle, we put hands on hips, What's the first step to get into pyramid? Uh huh. Uh huh. Shorten the stance. So I'm already out. Because remember, here's what we're getting out of. In our signature series, we're getting out of all this step to the left jazz. Instead, we're only taking the one quarter turn, taking the wide stance, doing DBP, coming up, doing triangle, coming up, second side triangle, coming out, now doing padottanasana, chilling out, coming back up. Second side of triangle, ooh, it's a bind and a bird opportunity. Come on up. Second side, ooh, it's a bind and a bird opportunity. Come on up. Now, we're doing our one set of pyramid. So my feet are too far. So we talked about verbs yesterday. What did we decide? Scoot? Heel toe. Heel toe, that's it. Heel toe is sweeping the nation as the verb to shorten your stance. All right, friends, take your hands to your hips. Please heel toe in a little closer. Pyramid. Pivot to the back of the room. What are my choices with my arms? Keep hands on hips or what? Yeah, sometimes people take an elbow. Sometimes they're able to do reverse namaskar. Some of you can do that. So it's your call. Hands on hips, that's fine. And then, and then here's the thing. This is all what kind of pose? What are we doing here? What is pyramid? It's not compression extension, thyroid, parathyroid. What is it? It's stretching. This is your cousin to DBJ in power yoga. And we were saying yesterday, we would never come into pyramid with long limbs out in space in power. It's usually for, like everything else in, in power, it's for sequencing. Here's what we're doing. Nope, because that's dangerous for the back. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna send all the toes to the back of the room. And remember how we were worried about Subra? Like, well, he was surfing. How do you fix this if I'm on a balance beam? Well, you want your back foot toes to turn out. So all those were good things, guys, but seriously, the fastest way to get somebody, bless you, to, to go from this, whoa, I'm on a tightrope, is 
Yeah. How much? How much? Uh, it depends. Every, every, remember? Remember? This is as unique as your fingerprint. The way that your hip femur in your hip socket turns out or doesn't. So the back foot's going to look different on everybody. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. There's no one size fits all with that angle. Just make sure it's not going that way. <laughs> Okay, so, so yeah, we have hands on the hips. We took that shorter stance, you inhale, lift your chest. And then what do we want here? Do we want to round down, put your forehead to your knee? No, no. what are we doing in pyramid? Heart. Yeah, line up your heart, knee, nose, and toes. Drape your torso in line with your leg. Forward fold, inhale, lift your chest, exhale, fold. You just say fold, there's a verb, fold. Inhale, lift your heart, exhale, fold. Fold. And I, I love this idea that it's, it is just all straight. Because why do we, what do we get out of this? Oh, big juicy stretch. I think this is one where Karina, remember she was showing us before and after with the quad. It was like, boom, I'm working. Boom, I'm oh, sleeping. Yeah. Boom, I'm working. Boom, I'm sleeping. And with the patterned pants, it was like, you can see that across the room. Hyperextension, active. Hyperextension, active. It was, it was very cool. So the idea here is chin to shin as able. And, and in your Yoga 108, there's that cool picture where she does have chin to shin, but you see in your Bikram style, it's a forehead knee situation. So this is a different posture. Biggest thing you're looking for, friends, people's buns are going this way. How do you verb your body part to me to help me get here? Even hips? Well, this is true, even hips. Well, that's a, it's, it's correct that we want the hips even, but ha, what, is, what do I do with the words even hips? If I think my hips are square, pull your right hip. Where? Forward. Yes. Or how about back? Pull your front hip back. Pull it, put your back hip forward. Best way to straighten it out here, guys. Draw your front thigh to the midline. Pull your, identify your left bun cheek. <laughs> Draw it to your center. Scissor your inner thighs, sometimes you hear. But this is what everyone's doing in this pose. Their buns have left the building. They're like way in their neighbor's neighborhood. So identify your front hip and draw it toward the midline. Pull it to the center. Change. Now, how do, what's job one if you want me to change, guys? Yes! Place your hands on your hips. Lift your chest, chin, and eyes. Yes! Now, where do you want me? Where do you want me? Second side. So why, why do I breathe in to start this? <gasps> yeah, we breathe in to get height, right? Mm -hmm. And we breathe out to fold, twist. Yeah, yes, inhale, we get some length. And exhale, we're going to execute the posture. Hands here. And again, this will happen. So we'll clean it up. Now, now remember our friends who are hypermobile, what would you say is the best verb, Karina, that gets your attention but doesn't feel punitive? Um, for me, it was like lift your knees. There you go. Because you cannot lift your kneecap without softening your knee. So that's wonderful. Students are so sweet. If you say micro bend, all they hear is bend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really cute. They're like, oh, bend. I know how to do that. But that whole idea about, you know, flex your quadricep muscle, if that's what's resonating with you, or soften your knee, lift your kneecap, and that made a huge difference. So that, that's our quest, is to figure out how we can help people become more aware, because in their head, they're checking a box, they're like, cool, my leg is straight, right? All is right in my world. But if you notice that there's a big puff back here, as to show you that there's a bubble behind their knee that is it's it's not 180 degrees it's like 190 maybe 206 it's a cool trick party trick <laughs> do we want to get them back into engagement so that's what's fun and that's what's going to lead to a lot of sore muscles in the next six weeks huh Rah! all right how do you get me out safe what is job one here place your hands on your hips and now what's job two because if, if my chin's here i'm i'm sunk so what do you want to tell me Lift your chest, chin, and eyes. And then what do we do in the sequence? No. Yeah. You just step feet to me. And then we're ready for tree. Okay, cool. Questions? 
simple. It's, it's simpler. It's simpler. Alicia and Jenny, we're going to roll the tape and post all of the stuff we shot yesterday on YouTube. We did, we did two hours on why we're not doing DBJ, so we're not even going to talk about it right now. These people have suffered long enough. <sighs> so the idea next is tree. Now, friends, friends, I'm begging you. Look at your students. I'm serious. The guys, the curvy people, the people like myself with my hips. Tree pose in Hatha is a standing half lotus. If I can't do lotus on the floor, I can't do lotus standing. I can in quotation marks, but right now my knee is really, really unhappy. It's really unhappy. It's really unhappy. Is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. God and your friends will forgive you, but your knees never will. So power tree to the rescue. If you're building balance, what do we call this expression? Kickstand, you're right. What do we call this expression? Power tree. Now, what do we need to do with the hips here? Squaring, Squaring is good. I'm feeling like that's true. Well, that's the thing, huh? We want to bring, yes! Yes, Mula Bandha. If I'm here and I'm checking the box, like leg to foot, foot to leg, I'm in tree. Like, are you happy with my back? How do you clean that up? <sighs> yeah, Lo yeah, this is Mula Bandha. Pull your lower abdominal wall up and in. We can have all kinds of graphic conversations about chickens and eggs. Oh, but Subra is going to listen to this. We're recording for him. Hi, Subra. <sighs> But this is what it's about. It's about this region here between your pubic bone and your navel getting a <laughs> hug up and in. Now, now squeeze your glutes. That's the, I can't squeeze my glutes from back here. Look, I can, but I'm not doing myself any good. It, the, the issue isn't squeeze your buns. It's help your tailbone down and back. That will help facilitate the external rotation of the leg. And, and if, you, if you feel compelled to go above your knee, Guys, tell people push leg to foot and foot to leg. What does that buy you? What's the first rule of alignment? What's the first rule of alignment? Dynamic tension. tension. Dynamic tension means press leg to foot, left foot to leg. Everyone, please come to Shavasana. I'd like to teach you tree pose on your back. Take your left foot and place it above your knee on your right thigh, like you're in tree pose. Or below your knee if that's better for your body. Now, bring your hands to heart center. Notice what's going on with your core, and if it's just relaxed, it's probably because you're lying down. If you could, please pull your lower abdominals up and in. So you kind of help your tailbone a little down and back. You kind of, yeah, it's a little squeezing of the glutes, but it's a little bit more than that. Kind of pull up the lower pelvic floor muscles. Now push your leg into your foot as your foot pushes into your leg. So, 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 so we're not crossing, we're pressing. Here can take it and above here can take it, but we never want to push here, huh? So press, press, press. Change, second side. We must help our students understand it's not a superior pose just to have your foot above your knee. Do you think that would surprise students to learn this? Mm -hmm. For whom and at what cost is that a good idea? Like if you have knee history or tighter hips, it's just not gonna work. So now we're putting leg to foot, foot to leg. We're not crossing the leg, guys. That's a different posture. Tree pose, either above or below your knee. The goal is to push both of those limbs together. Do you see how that adds some glue to it? A lot of students just think it's like, oh, just hang on for dear life. And maybe that's how we start. But while you're hugging muscle to bone, the more you push the leg into the foot and the foot into the leg, the more you're able to drop your tailbone just like that. I could see it from here, Eliza. Show me before, show me after. Exactly like that. 
Do you guys feel the opportunity to build these muscles on the inside? Yeah, so, so, that's, so that's fun. All right, roll yourself to your right side fetal position. Bring your knees to your chest. Take your top arm and press yourself up to an easy, comfortable seat. So a lot of times people have the range of motion to do a standing half lotus, which is the Hatha tree, but sometimes they don't. So watch out for your students who are just really like trying to check this box, but they're, they're like forward. Do you, do you see how that's just counterproductive? Because, right, because what do you want from their back? What would you, straight. And you see so many people forcing this. You see the knee is hurting. They're not even breathing. So thanks for listening. Now, let's be clear. They're not a candidate for toe stand if they're here. It's a whole different arm balance inversion conversation that we will have in power. But uh, my friends who practice Padan Gustafs and a toe stand, can I bring you guys into Standing Mountain so we can look over what's happening? Because it's not for everybody, but this would be a good time to, to, to ask any questions of you and such. Are you down for that, buddies who do toe stand? Um, yeah, yeah. I would demo, but I tore my meniscus trying to do it and cheating. I decided a long time ago that it's okay to sit on the opposite cheek's foot, you know, because I'm special. I thought I'd just find a hack for this pose, but the knee doesn't want to rotate under load. Bad idea. So, so if it's available to you, Julia, team, what's the first thing? Shift your work to your left leg. Reach down, pick up your right foot, bring it to your high hip crease with an underhand grip. So Hatha tree, yeah, we you hold. Why do we use an underhand? So, so just start with option A, Julia. Let's hold your foot with your underhand grip with your left hand. Okay, well, okay, if it's available to you, Hatha tree, please hold. So see how she has an underhand grip? That's really helpful to open her shoulder and chest. If she was holding it forward like that, she would collapse in the upper body. We would lose all the energy of the posture. So it, it is something for you guys to understand. A person does not have to be able to hold this pose with two hands at heart to be eligible for toe stand. Does that surprise you? A lot of times we are thinking that unless you can keep your foot there with two hands at heart, you can't do toe stand. Are we, are we surprised by this? Yeah. Okay, well, I submit to you humbly, it's just not as important as you would think because, hey, the alignment is perfect. And, and what if she has slipper pants on, you know? She can do it. She's pushing, and she, do you, are you doing this on purpose? You can tell, look, she's mm -hmm. pushing leg to foot, and because she's pushing foot to leg, she has the integration we were speaking about in her core midsection. Good job. Okay, now what's job one to toe stand, friends? What's the verb? Fold forward, touch the floor or the mat, yes. But hold, I'm scared because you're bending your knee. The important step, guys, is to keep a straight leg and touch the floor. Yep, see, hold, see, that's the way to get in. And the floor is far away because she's blessed with long legs, so I'm not worried about her bending to touch the floor. But do you see the difference? Bending all the way down, very bad for the knee. Folding in half, touching the floor as able. If she's got to bend the knee to make that last half inch, no one's going to die. It's okay. Do you see the difference? Okay, once you touch the floor, here's how it goes. Bend your knee, lift your what? What? Sure. Heel. Bend your knee, lift your heel. And Julia, that's cool. Look at you go. She's good. Now, friends, we always think we got to look in the mirror here, but nah, uh We got to look where? On the floor. On the floor in front of you, right? About three feet in front of you. Bring one hand to heart center, maybe both. Which is the easier hand? It's usually the open side, isn't it, Julia? Yeah, honey, you look amazing. And then there you go. You first, see how she did that? She straightened the leg and then watch. It's good, there we go. Change, that was beautiful. Thank you guys.
guys give her a hand this is a challenging pose it's after lunch we're a little sleepy ah second side shift your work to your right leg reach down pick up your left foot hold it in the hold it up to your high hip crease i always love how the bikram script says to your costume and that's just such an all the world's indeed a stage kind of memo. Here's her underhand grip so that her shoulder chest stays open. It's perfect. She can bring a hand to heart center, maybe two. Let's use words like that. Bring a hand to heart center, maybe two. I love how Vidal always says as able. Don't you love that? You can get a lot of work done with bring a hand to heart or both as able. It's so, so like two words, two words to make an all level class. It's gorgeous. Now, toe stands, fold, forward, touch the floor. And so she's keeping her leg straight the whole way down. As able, there we go. There, that, see, it's just reasonable to bend your knee at that point. Bend your knee, lift your heel. And I love how you're sitting. She is sitting for the most part on the same side cheek, right? Or in the center, if that's right. But it's, here's where I hurt myself and I'm going around the world telling people not to do it. I thought it would be more available to sit on the opposite. And that was dumb. I made rotation under load. It was very stupid. But my ego was like, I'm doing toe stand. I'm cool too. At what cost? It's not true. It's not kind. It's not yoga. It was just showing off. I'm going to get stand up paddle board under me sometime. It's going to be awesome. That was in my head. That's not right. First, you straighten the whole leg. But here's the thing, Julia. Bring your hands closer to your center. It's just going to be healthier for our back to either put hands, you know, like by your hips or at your heart, you know what I'm saying? Because way out here ends up putting a little extra load on the back. But I'm not going to bug her in real time. Why? I'm going to make her fall. And you're beautiful. Yeah, give her a hand. So we're not going to get all crazy in real time. Like, you shouldn't make her fall. But just while we're in a learning moment, careful about limbs being super far from the body when you're, what? Rounded forward, folded forward, under load. Everything closer to the center is just going to be that much safer for your back. But that's beautiful, guys. That's gorgeous. Isn't that fun? Question? Yes. So um, in the toe stand, I was trying because I generally cannot do the good toe stand. Oh, stand up. But Let's see. You were working on it, and I, I didn't mean to yeah, leave you was, in the dark. No, no. I was wondering, since you said that we don't have to have your... Hold. Okay, well, I don't have to do what? But but the uh, hands over here in the heart yeah. so you can hold it like this. But but look how you're holding it. That's an overhand grip. Take your underhand grip. See the difference? See how you would do a bicep curl? That's an underhand I grip. See. And look how it show us before. Hold the front of your foot. Mm -hmm. See how her shoulders collapse? Mm -hmm. It's also very torquing on the elbow. Okay? Yeah. yeah, now see how she's behind it like she mm -hmm. could be lifting it. That's healthy. That's the line of pull for the biceps and the front delt gets to open. So yeah, you don't have to have both hands at heart. If it's available, as able, yeah. But when you go down, yeah. can you keep your... Uh, Here, fold forward. fold forward. Just keep your legs straight. That's all I care about. What are you worried about? That was perfect. Okay, I have my hands down and I'm going down. And do I have to move my hands to the heart center or not? Can I stay Okay, here? you can stay there and be excellent. Okay. Better to be excellent in the expression where you are than to add the decoration before you've built your foundation. That's what, that's what I was saying. Students are so excited about things that are those nth degrees, but you gotta build your house before you paint it. So that's, that's such a Vidal thing to say. I mean, I can say names over, but I was like, you must build your house before you paint it. Like, doesn't that just sound like my teacher? <laughs> but no, it's the truth. You know, we get so pumped about these little decorations at the end, we forget. You know, what is the pose about? Agility, balance, coordination. Get stable first, touch the floor, and have at it. It's a great place to develop the external rotation you're going to need in your hip. It's a great place to develop confidence. This is a scary posture. Like Julia said, it's challenging. So your next step is bring a hand to heart. And if it's just one today, and it's an excellent pose that's not hurting your knee, it's not hurting your back, you're not falling on your friends, then it's good. That's what's kind and true. Remember, we, we checked the boxes on the yamas today. As able, two hands. And sometimes it's as quick as that, isn't it, Julia? Where you're like, yay, right? Have you all been in toe stand where you're like, boop. And then one day it's, boop. And one day it's, take a picture, somebody! Look, I'm in toe stand! Boop. So does that help? Yes, yeah, yes. sweet, sweet. 
grip, your elbow wasn't hyper. Good eye, Jenny. Did you guys see that? Because, yeah, Ivanka's um, elbow is a little hypermobile, like a lot of friends. Good call. Good eye. All right. Any questions about tree toastana? Say it. Vrikshasana. Vrikshasana. So what drives us crazy sometimes is how when the Bikram um, was, was codified in 1971 and they got their patent in 73, they took different words. So they call tree pose Tadasana. If you're in a standard Bikram community and you say Vrikshasana, they're, they're seriously, it's crickets. They don't know what you mean. Yet when we say Tadasana, we kind of mean mountain pose. So isn't it interesting? Yeah, just one of those things. If you're in a, you know you're in a Bikram studio when you hear tree pose called a Tadasana. But we can call it Vrikshasana. Let's say it. Vrik, Vrikshasana. V-R-K-S-A-S-A-N-A. And what's fun about your Sanskrit there is vrittis. Vrittis are the fluctuations of your mind. The stuff on the dry erase board. Right? Yeah. What we're talking about? Uh -huh. Vrittis are the five flavors of drama that plague us in thinking. And vrittis, what it's telling you is the thoughts twist and turn. V-R. Vrittis. Vrikshasana. Vruk. It's telling you trees, what? Sway. They sway. They twist and turn, just like the five flavors of drama between your ears, the vrittis. I don't know if that thrills you to your soul, but I get excited about making those little connections in Sanskrit. Vrittis, right? Imagination, memory, sleep, right perception, wrong perception, and vrikshasana. Trees move. Yes? Um, so uh, what's the best way to learn on the... Practice. Use your Yoga 108 app with the pronunciation and practice. I love being in the car. So I sent you your voice memo for Hatha. You're rolling. You might as well turn off the radio. It's just going to bum you out. But you'd be like, inhale, upward salute, Urva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. High push up to low push up. And that's just, it's practice, practice, practice. Everyone, vrikshasana, 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 vrik, vrik, vrik. It's, it's asana for your mouth. Vrikshasana. Don't let the Sanskrit freak you out. Don't let it bum you out. Okay? But have fun with it. Everyone knows how to say shavasana. Let's say it. Shavasana. It's not savasana. It's shavasana. Shavasana. Let's say Shalabhasana. 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 Balasana. Balasana. Yeah, see, nail the ones you know and have fun with it. And then practice the ones you're practicing and have fun with that. Your students don't know the difference. That's true. But please enjoy geeking out on it your whole life. I always liked that I learned real quick Ekapada Kundanyasana 2. And I felt all fancy because I could say Ekapada Kundanyasana 2. It's, it's hook and fly. I can't hook and fly. I can't do that pose. I can't do that pose. And so when I would always be bummed out that I can't do that pose, I know how to say it in Sanskrit. And so that like helped my little soul feel better about this is my hook and fly. I got one knee down. So Y'all are up there and I'm like, mm -hmm. this is it. This is option A, right? <laughs> but I don't know how to say it in Sanskrit. So enjoy, enjoy. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. But again, when you're teaching Hatha, it's Sanskrit word first, English second. Why? Well, it raises the vibration just to hear Utkatasana. You're like, ooh, what? Ah, crap, she's loading up chair. Right? Utkatasana. Ooh. Camel. Ah! Ustrasana. Oh, tell me more. Ah, shit, she's loading up camel. But the, like the, it tickles your ears a little bit. And then it's fun to like use your mnemonic devices. Ustrasana, camel. The straw that broke the... Yeah, it's fun. Utkatasana. Awkward to say? Awkward to do. It's awkward pose. Utka means awkward. And so anyway, have fun with it. And we practice together. But yeah, how do I recommend studying? In the car. In the car. Okay, cool. Let's take a water break because that's where we're at in the sequence, aren't we? Right? Yes, please. Oh, I thought it was about water break. Yes? Do we allow for, you know, grow your trees? Okay. Allow is a great word because, again, we want to convey when people have the green light, right? 
We have a wonderful way of layering things, and it's in the video from yesterday, or maybe it's when I taught you guys the class, but let's go there. When would you want the branches to grow if you have people going into toe stand? When the toes are folded forward. So, so when our toes are folded forward, that's when we grow the branches. Then we say, toe stand, come back, meet your friends in tree. And then while they're in travel time, everyone bring hands to heart center. Find a round of breath, change. Watch the video. I know it's on the one on the website. You'll see we go, okay, second side. Reach down, pick up your left foot, bring it to your high hip crease or power tree with me. Because who are the only people watching the teacher? Who are the only people? New people. New people. Should they be in a standing half lotus most of the time? Nope. So do you model the best standing half lotus ever? No, you're showing them what to do. They're watching you. So it's bring your left foot to your high hip crease or power tree with me. Toe stands, fold forward, touch the floor. And then you turn them loose and you're like, trees grow your branches. That way we didn't make them wiggle and fall. Your guys are having a good time. We keep you up here and they're like, Toe stand, come meet your friends in tree. Toe stands, come back, and as they're moving, everyone hands to heart center, and then we all meet together. Change. Yeah, it's totally chill. Honor your space. So after your tree, will you please put in your notes, because I know it's in the scripts and stuff. Let's write down honor your space. My teacher, our teacher, is the only teacher I've ever heard say it like that, instead of, honor your standing series, bow to your standing series. No one wants to be told to bow. That's not cool with this guy up here. And that's, that's what our teacher says is why he doesn't say that. Our teacher is very clear. He's not attaching any dogma to yoga. So when we say honor your space, it's just so much more accessible to people with a spiritual tradition or without a spiritual tradition. So I really get passionate about encouraging new teachers to at the end of the tree pose in Hatha, not in power, why not in power? It's a flow. We don't stop the bus in power. It, we just keep going. And next weekend, on Sunday, when we turn the page to power, I'll let you know, you never ever take a water break just randomly. You always bring them to what pose first, always. Yes. And then what do you do while you're in child's pose first? Breathe. You breathe. Breath. You find your breath. And then you like kind of like from the back of your hand be like, it's a great time for a sip of water. We don't be like, all right, let's drink some water. No, no. All right, on your space. No, no. We do set your intention, but that's really early on in class after we got you all sun, salu sun salutation aid. Okay, so thanks for listening. We drank some water. We answered that question. That was a very good question. We had a good time there. Now we're going to turn around and lie down for some Shavasana, huh, guys? It's the what minute mark in class. If you're teaching a 60 minute class, it's 40 minutes. Yes. Okay, so now we're entering what segment? Because we have names the warm up segment, we just finished the challenge segment, and now it's the floor segment series. Yeah. Let's get our segment series and sequencing down. There's some words that are gonna bug you. In your Hatha and in your power, you guys are learning template three 20 minute segments. Each segment has a theme, warm up, challenge, floor. That's for Hatha and that's for power, okay? When you're talking about Hatha, we say series because why? For the most part, it yeah, it never changes. It's a series, right? It's a series. In power, it's different all the time for the most part. So when you link poses together, we call that a sequence. A sequence. A sequence. Where you're in down dog, you do stuff on the right side, you do stuff on the left side, you get back to down dog. That's a sequence. All roads lead to down dog. And then, should you read the room and find out that they are winded, take them first where? child's pose. Encourage them to do what? Breathe. And then in, in say, hey, great time for some water. Do you always hear newer students choking because those poor deers got to child's pose? <laughs> it's so sad. 
breathe first, drink later. It's just a good system. Cheers, let's drink. Do you guys feel like you're getting enough water in training? Man, I woke up this morning, I was so dehydrated. I wish we could sleep with an IV. Just because we're hot <laughs> yoga teachers. It wouldn't just be so chill to wake up every day hydrated. Mm. 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 Okay, so now we're in the floor segment of Hatha Yoga. What posture are we in? Shavasana, yeah. It's good to budget for two minutes here. It's in your notes, and I just think it's smart. Why, yeah, two minutes, you know, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, we really want to budget for three to five minutes at the end, but that's really tough to do in a 60 minute class. It's really tough. So if you can get two minutes here, what is that, why is that nice? Change the tone. Yes, change the tone. You get, yeah, you're breathing, you relax. I mean, what's the deal with challenging s stuff? It's just challenging. So this is a great time for them to land. This is also where a lot of times we'll turn on the music. The, I like to have the music on the whole time, but in a traditional studio like ours, this is usually, our teacher, I love it, he usually turns it on during wide-legged forward fold. But in most studios, when they're choosing to do just the music in the floor segment, it's usually now when the Shavasana is happening. And what's the next pose after they have that two minutes of just being, 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 just being? Pavana Muktasana. Let's say it. Pavana Muktasana. Pavana Muktasana. Let's say it. Pavana Muktasana. Muk means face. Pavana is talking about a certain direction of flow of prana. And asana meaning your posture. Wind removing pose is sometimes its English name, but the 14 year old boy in me starts giggling. So I don't know. You may wish to like, take a run at Pavana Muktasana. Pavana Muktasana. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, the fun of this pose is all about the colon, and we all love hearing about the ascending, the descending, the transverse colon. Do we? Do we? Let's just be the team that doesn't talk about the colon. Let's instead talk about this posture is great for digestion and absorption. How about that? Guys, this pose is a natural probiotic, helping get more from your nutrition, facilitating healthy digestion, absorption. Yeah, we don't got to go there with elimination. I mean, again, you know, we're trying to keep them in their practice, you know? So I don't know, it's just, I don't mean to say it's a pet peeve, but I really love how we have a lot of good to do for their spine in this pose. You nodded your head yesterday, Corinne, when I was hinting about the McArdle stretch. If you have friends who go to their back pain doctor, and maybe Jenny's dad talks to people about this already all day long, he's like, hey, your back hurts? Bring your knees to your chest, right? This is day one stuff for back pain. Doctors tell their patients, when your back hurts, lay on your back, draw your knees to your chest. And what spine is this, guys, when you're in this shape? Embryonic primary curve. Like, this is you in the womb. Your brain will always reset back to peace and happiness. Because, look, I'm basically in child's pose upside down, huh? Yeah. So when the going gets tough, Mother Nature wants you tucked in a ball protecting your vital organs. It's the opposite of camel, isn't it, friends? When it's like... Whoa, everything's lit up. So, so now in the sequence, we have people bringing which knee in? Right knee. Yeah, the right knee. And now, now does it work to just pull your knee down? No. no. What do you got to do? Squeeze yeah. it towards your armpit. Yes! Guide your knee towards the armpit. You know, hold your knee and give it a squeeze. Direct it to your armpit. Because like, you're going to run out of space, right? What's good about the grip? Can you lift your yeah, well, why is that superior? Because you're sweaty. Yes! You're sweaty? Yes! 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 And it develops grip strength. Like if someone's falling out of the boat or off a cliff, take my hand! Like you want to be able to pull them up. And if you're, if you're like, well, I'm slippery, so I'll just put a towel here. Like you're going to miss out, right? Take my hand! So, or opening your own salsa jar. 
Does that resonate? Yeah. You don't got to go across the street to the neighbors. You're like, you can open your salsa jar. Now, what's going on with my left shoulder to tell you that something is amiss? Except it's on the Yeah, so give me some verb, your body part. Connect your left shoulder to the mat. Bring your elbow down. Squeeze your elbow, uh, your left elbow down and your shoulder down as much as you can. Yeah, guys, notice your left shoulder. Press it on the floor. Use your elbows to pull deeper. Guys. Is your left shoulder on the floor? Put your left shoulder on the floor. This will keep you from rolling to the side, huh? Now, what's going on with my long leg? What do you want to do? Flex it. Yeah, flex your toes to your nose. Why, why is that good? Like, if I'm just here going to town, it, okay, maybe I put my shoulder down. What, what does having energy here do for us? It does, it engages, and it stabilizes. Again, we're trying not to roll to the side. Now, is my back in a nice, happy shape right here? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I endorse this idea when we have the say, because it's a fusion class. How about we retain the right knee and then invite the left? Mm -hmm. Then switch them. Instead of going flat. Yeah. Because people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But this idea will get you shot in a Bikram studio. Huh? Mm -hmm. They're not having it. Mm -hmm. But if your back hurts, who wins? The roll or your back? Yeah. Your back. So I'm saying when it's my call and I know I got students with back history in the room, I'm like, okay, everybody, keep your right knee. If I can remember, there's that too. Mm -hmm. Keep your right knee handy. Draw your left knee beside it. Give yourself a big hug. Release your right knee. Didn't knock a thing off your lumbar. Your back is happy. It's all good. But again, it's not traditional, so just so you know. So, yeah, see what I'm saying? Because, look, everybody try it. Let's lay on your back and hug your knees in. Yep. So if they have back history and I care more about their back than the rule, I'm like, hey, keep your right knee handy. Interesting. Oh, yeah. And it rebrings the joints together too, so it's like a smoother. But again, it's not traditional. So it's not that one's right or wrong. It's just for whom and why and when would you endorse an idea? And if you had a lot of back pain in the room, or if you're seeing someone do it and be like, Ow. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. It's yes. Yes. yes! That's right. It keeps your lumbar flat, huh? So, um, one thing with me uh, that I've noticed, I think that I am double jointed in my hips, and so I, like, with certain poses, like, on only just then, right now, um, my one leg, as I'm bringing it out, my hip kind of cracks. It doesn't hurt. Where? Anymore. Where do you feel that? But, like, sometimes, um, even, like, when I'm uh -huh. out, when uh -huh. I do, like, yeah, right, like right, right, right. Here. Okay. Okay, yeah. show me where it hurts. It doesn't hurt. Uh, but you can feel it cracking. Crack it, like, All know. right, guys, thank you for bringing that up, Kylie, because guess what? We need to talk about what Mula Bunda is really for to address exactly that. Because that crack you're feeling, that pop, I'll bet you money, it's L5-S1 articulating. Oh. They are bumping into each other. Oh. So, so, you ready? It, seems like it, comes it, comes to me. it could be your SI joint then. Because it could be right where the sacrum sits between the ilium bones. Or not. It could just be the ball and socket. We don't know. But, but I, I aim to answer your question. And I aim to do the mulabunda activity that we should do too. So can we, let's do the mulabunda activity and see if that answers it. And then we're going right back to your question. So don't let me go anywhere near forward till after Kylie checking this box. And I'm glad that you brought this up. Because that's a very common thing. Yes, that's that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And and while we're on that, and while we're on that important thing, we are sitting on the hands during activities like that to keep your back neutral, and it helps, doesn't it? And Kylie, here, just because we're on that thread, that's a good thread to be on, Julia. Thank you. Sit on your hands, palms turned down. Keep on your elbows. Now, everybody, now bring your knees up. Extend your legs high. And now let's pull up your mula bandha, all right? So again, lower abdominal wall up and in. Chicken laying an egg, changing her mind. Slowly lower down. And now let's hover 30 degrees off the floor and scissor, kick, and kick, and kick. Okay, that's where it hurt, the whole way. Just the right side, huh? Yeah, but it's- Show me where. 
both of my hips are double jointed and they do something. I can imagine that it's probably in your poses. You have to really pull your legs toward the midline, huh? That's important for us to know, guys. When you saw those pictures of different pelvic bowls and different shapes of like the, fem the femur neck, right? Remember some were curved, some were straight? And remember how some of the sockets were deeper? You probably are blessed with some of those deeper sockets, kind of like we learn about Karina with her turnout. So it's not a bad thing. It's just something to attend to. And that the memo there, especially in like half pigeon, is to always kind of pull your leg bones toward each other. Does that resonate? Mm -hmm. That's a really important thing. And I'm grateful that you brought it up. I got super tight hips. That's the last thing on my mind. But you guys with a lot of hip mobility, it's, it's great for a lot of things. Do you kind of ask yourself in things like half pigeon to sort of pull everything to the center? Because if you're just chilling out, it probably pops out. I mean, that, I can pop my hips out of place, though. Does that sound so like what Kylie's uh, describing? Yeah, because, like, if you, so, like, most people do uh -huh, that. Oh, yeah, um, right. That's exactly but I can way. go to there. So you, yeah. Thank oh, God, thank sick. God you have body awareness to attend to this. Because if she were in a pose and she didn't have this kind of awareness, she could really jack but things that's up. that's why, like, I, if I go too deep, then I'll just pop my hip out and now my hip's over here. Oh. So you know in. your body best. That's why when you were saying go lower, go lower, if I go lower and I get to here on this side with that knee, then I almost have to go like this and then I saw, I saw High saw five. You in. need, you know your body best. You are the expert in your body. And that's why when our teachers get crazy mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just like you got to do you boo and then have a great chat with your teachers so they remember what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. My hips make the same sound when I do, and it sounds like really yeah. kind of like scary sometimes. Guys, please remember this conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's important. In your brain, you're teaching and you have a picture and your idea. And you have this excitement about helping teach somebody something. And then you tell yourself a story that maybe they're not getting it or maybe they're tired. Maybe it's up to you to help them. And that's not correct. So God bless you for stopping the bus to help us remember who's in this body. She's the expert of her body. Get a second to go like this, to get on with your day, leave her alone. Then we get to clarify and work together. Oh, I'm so glad that the bad thing that could have happened, like saying a name, never happened. And we can roll the tape. We know a name never came out, but <laughs> you know when you're being hassled and when you're responsible with your energy, you get the hell out of the room for a couple minutes, calm down and come back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm in my head like, everybody went to Thai and they're sleepy and tired because they had sleepy tired food. It's on me to get everything going together. It's master posture of the series. It's not your new life. It's just triangle. And then I've heard people tell me to tuck my tailbone. You and just I tell them, it. have you met me? If I tuck my tailbone, Kylie too, we're going to have to call yeah, an ambulance because with their strong buns, they could literally pull their own hips out of their own socket. Ever see somebody dislocate a shoulder and then pop it back in? Yes. Yeah. The hip is exactly the same construction. Now, the hip is built for stability rather than the mobility of the shoulder, but it's the same damn thing. Yeah. Karina, will you please forgive me for getting okay. excited about your lunch? Please forgive me. <laughs> and if your child is slippery, you'll get more out of it! Well, no, that was why it's like, it was so slippery, and I was like, if I go down, I'm going to end up in the splits. How so. educational can you get? There we go. See, this is a blessing that's happened. Woo! Fucking pitta, man. You know, we get fired up. You know, it's between 10 o'clock and 2. We gotta watch out. What did I have for lunch? I didn't go get my five star tie on. Like, I, I was tempted. I knew it. But if I go and eat spicy food, Posture Clinic is gonna be just off the hook. Had a cold chocolate protein shake and a hard boiled egg. That's pitta cooling. Right, so thank God I didn't go to Thai. I love me some spice. I'd have been like, nom, 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 nom. 
Woo, that would have been a mess. <laughs> See Ayurveda, guys. Learn how you're put together or you can break some hearts. <laughs> Kylie and Karina have the same construction for their hip mobility. And it's great for party tricks, isn't it? There's a lot of fun things you guys can do, but we got to be careful and integrated. And, and so, so Mula Bunda. So, so don't hurt yourself, guys, but if you choose to learn a little more about this pelvic floor situation, join me here on the back. And yes, to Julia's point, don't make a move without sitting on your hands. Now, students are going to get confused, and they're going to turn their palms up. It's really cute. You say, sit on your hands, and the students be holding their own buns. It's kind of cute, yeah. So, so help people understand, with your palms turned down. Now, your hands are trying to put your sacrum very flat, OK? So now, everybody, um, identify in your imagination here your pelvic floor muscles. And it's kind of like some different visuals help. Um, you know, if you were at home by yourself, just be bopping around and you're super hydrated and there's nobody else in your house. Your front door is locked. You live in a gated community. So you're going to leave the door open when you go to the bathroom. But just imagine the surprise. What, what muscles would recruit first if there you were going to the bathroom and then suddenly you heard your front door open up? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's Mula Bunda, right? All right. Here's another visual. Say you're walking through a meadow with bare feet and it's summertime and the, the grass feels so good on your bare feet and then you accidentally step into a puddle. Like, did that react too? I mean, it's like, oh. you would pull up Mula Bunda. Chicken. Here we go. I'm laying an egg and now. Oh, wait. No, here comes a wolf. Oh, I'm going to keep my egg inside me. Okay, those are your mula bunda muscles. So keep all that happening. And if you could please uh, lower your legs to, if it doesn't hurt you. So friends, if your hips are concerning you not to do this. But slowly lower to 30 degrees out. Now, let's recalibrate. Your lumbar curve, is it starting to lift off the floor? Okay, now pull it down and make it flat. So notice where you are, natural lumbar curve. If we could have space to put our hand down there, you don't want that. Put your lower back so flat. What did it take? Pelvic what? Pelvic tuck, yeah, to put the back flat. Now, lower 30 degrees more, keep it going. Pull your egg up and in, keep your low back flat. Okay, is your back still on the floor? Okay, now, now lower 30 degrees more. This is team where you must come to the elbows. You have to, okay, or you will hurt your back. Heel tap, swimmer kick, crisscross, change, shavasana. So, 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 now, only if your back is healthy, but abandon the activity if it hurts you. Kick your legs up. Don't sit on your hands, but I get stop if this is going to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. Slowly, without muscularity, without mula bandha, just like a new student would, not thinking, guys, they're thinking about their hair. They're wondering what's for dinner. And they lower their legs 30 degrees. Now they lower their legs. Are you feeling, are you feel, do you feel the pop? Go a little lower, you feel the pop? Yeah, I feel a pop between knees to chest and, and knees to chest. I had a guy in TT. We heard the pop. It was like, oh. it was the lumbar scraping on the sacrum. And we brought knees to chest, rubbed it out, gave him some ice. He was sore for about a week. But boy, I've never really heard something so loud and scary. And it was a reminder to be real careful when you're saying, hey, hey, let's do something wrong. But also just be really careful to be clear because students are going to space out. Once you start doing core stuff, like, and they're looking at the ceiling, tired. yeah, they're tired, they're over it, maybe they're feeling it, maybe they're not. So if they go to half acid, they could really hurt their back. Did you feel safer in your back when your pelvic floor was up and in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if you choose to do a third set just to do the proper set again, just to make your back happy, uh, again, sit on your hands, pull up your mula bandha. Like really feel snug there. Keep your low back super flat and then slowly lower down. And every little bit you lower, you have to recalibrate, don't you? You have to pull up and in. You have to put your back flat. 
And if it's a and, and it feels different on different days. Prop to your elbows. It feels different on different days, huh? Some days your back is not having it. Some days your core is not having it. But this is the safe thing to put them on their elbows. We don't ever want you guys teaching stuff like this. That's very bad. This, very safe. Bad, I won't have it. This, yes. Make sense? Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's stretch those a lot. And we'll talk more about abs as we get into power, but uh, let's talk about transitionals. Okay, there we, go. we were on the back. So, so Kylie, thank you for bringing that up. And it's a great reminder about biomechanical individuality. It's a great reminder that these are not stick figures that we're teaching. They're people, and they all have different hips and stories and souls. So any, anything else you want to learn about? Because it's a great thing to tell people that you can't change your skeleton. You can change a little bit about what's going on in muscles and range of motion, but you're assigned the earth suit you're assigned to for a reason, and you're going to teach from this place. You guys are going to have profound awareness about safety. You're going to have profound awareness about biomechanical individuality. You're going to have profound awareness about get over your idea of what the pose is, turn away, and serve where you're helpful. We took the right knee in. We hugged. We kept it, we brought the left knee in, we traded legs, we hugged it. We're gonna bring both knees in and we hug them. You reach, why is it bad to cross your ankles? I know it is, but I need to remember. I don't think it's bad. I think it just bugs our B group teachers. I swear to God, I know. Oh, really? It's just a box that we check up. Hey, don't uncross your ankles. I'm like, what the heck? I don't know if it matters. I don't, oh, but, but I'm well trained to say uncross your ankles. And at the end of the day, I can't think of why it's a bad thing. <laughs> it feels better. It, it does. does. It's more it's natural. Natural. Yeah. It's it does. Okay, then cross your other ankle. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. And if you've crossed your ankle, you have time to cross the other ankle. So the are symmetrical. Good point. Now, team, if you're teaching Hatha, and it's Hatha Fusion, and you can make the call, you have all this play time between here and here to goof around with core. If you're teaching like a 9.30 a.m. Hatha Fusion, they want core. They want to work out. So spend it down. Put on a jazzy song at the 40 minute mark. Have at it. You're going to end up doing a transitional setup anyway. So you can really boost attendance that way, making it what the people want. Because a lot of times they avoid Hatha because they want to work their core. Right? It's called customer service, right? OK, so let's get the transitional setup down. I don't worry about a 60 minute class making this, the disclaimer speech because you hear it. Hey, if you're healing in your back, go ahead and roll over, right? We're only doing one. If they're healing in their back, they're not going to do it. So don't worry about that. Worry about cross your thumbs, flex your toes. Why do I want my toes flexed on the transitional setup? It was, it, yeah, it was kind of exactly why. Yeah, it was kind of exactly why you wanted it flexed while I'm here. It just it sets your back. Now guys, here's the breathing. You inhale to come up. You exhale once and then twice to come down. Cross your thumbs, flex your toes. Inhale, sit straight up. Double exhale, touch your feet. Okay guys? I know it's weird because we said exhale to execute when it's isotonics. So when we're down here doing abs, yeah, it's right? This one is all limbs long. Okay, question? Is this a pressure? Is there any symbolism behind the double exhale? Yeah, the first puff knocks on the door, the second puff, you go through the door. That's what our teacher says. The first is like you're, go, you're opening the door, and then the second puff, you go through the door. That is the symbolism, yeah. Knock, knock, who's there? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's just tradition. Again, it's just tradition. It's just tradition. Well, you know what? Bring your arms up. Hook your thumbs, like pull. Lock it out, kind of. Like lock it. Well, pull, and especially on you with your lats. Mwah. 
lucky supermodel. I'm glad the camera's probably right on you. Uh, pull your thumbs away from each other. Yes. Now relax your arms. And now pull. You can see her lats open up. This is opening up the side ribs where we want to breathe. Again, in yoga, we breathe omnidirectionally. 65% of your lung capacity is on the dorsal side of your body. We're trying to teach people how to breathe more into their side ribs, and this accomplishes that. When you put your thumbs together and you pull them slightly away, it's part of opening your lats, your big muscles that basically start at your low back and insert into your humerus. And that we see them as like the V-shape on a dude, right? And so with your thumbs together, look at You kind of pull a little opening there. So, so I don't think I've ever done that in a class. You never crossed your thumbs? No. Loop your thumbs, flex your toes, inhale, sit straight up. Double exhale, touch your feet. And we're only doing one, so it's not a big deal. Next, we do what, guys? We flip over to do what? Cobra. Cobra. Let's say it. Bhujangasana. Bhujangasana. Yeah, Bhujangasana. Let's say it. Bhujangasana. Bhujangasana. Yes. <laughs> you know them all. You guys know exactly how to say the back part of every Sanskrit pose because it's always going to be asana. You always know that you're going to put the emphatic on that syllable <laughs> to say asana like it's awesome. So bhujangasana, bhujangasana. All right, so bhujangasana, friends, bring your legs together. Now, you don't usually hear this, but we're in teacher training, so we have time to talk about this. Look at my back right now. There's no muscularity in my core, and I could just lift my upper torso and, and dent my back, right? But it's a back bend. So what's job one of every back bend? Tilt your hips. Tuck. 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 This is tilt. This is tuck. This is tilt. This is tuck. This is tilt. This is tuck. Tilt, tuck. Tilt, tuck. Tilt, tuck. Twerk, work. I don't know. <laughs> but the idea is you want to get organized first. You want to pull, just like you're standing doing a back bend. You want to pull your pelvic floor up and in. Right? You want to help your tailbone down and back, right? You want to set your back because you don't want to fold T12 L1. That's a way to hurt yourself. You want to secure your low back and then mobilize your thoracic, right guys? Everyone join me on your tummy. Because we have seven minutes in which to do this activity. And then we're gonna finish posture clinic in the lobby because I was poorly managing our time today. Please, if you could, put yourself flat down with your hands beside your ribs. And I love the cue that you may wish to notice. Can you see your fingers in your peripheral view? Because if you can, that's the, the idea. You may wish to walk your hands back a little further. Yeah, yeah, but not too far. Kylie, yours were perfect. Now, everybody, lift your shoulders up without setting your back. I just want you to see what that feels like. And now lift higher. I think you're really nailing this pose. Does that hurt? I don't want you to hurt yourself, but it, man, it hurts my eyes to see this kind of dent, right? So chill out, go down, and now pull your belly. Yes, see, now it's all flat. See, that's integrated. Again, once you pull that, you get this flatter. Does that feel safer? Yeah. Do it without muscularity, just, just lift. This is a dent, it's not integrated, but chill out. Now fortify, because you're a champ, you know what's up, like right here, now lift from here. See the difference? Mm -hmm. It's very subtle. But did that hurt you there? Is that why you had your hand there, Kylie? No. I'm just okay. To yeah. Okay. Well, Karina, see, see, see right here. Now, chill out. Now, if she has no muscles here, nothing going on to set her back, and she just lifts her upper body, watch. That's a big dent. That there's nothing integrated here that's harmful. We wouldn't want her to back bend like that. Now, if she pulls her tummy up and in, yes. See how this got long now? Mm -hmm. Now keep that shape and lift your heart. Look, that is a champ. That is awful. Okay. <laughs> I know that back bends are a little dicey for you right now, but when you put your legs together, yeah, you're having pain there, so it's not going to feel good on, on you at all, huh? Um, Pamela, don't have muscles, but don't hurt yourself, but lift your chest. And look, guys, you see this dent? You see it? See it? See it? Ouch. Now, now relax. Integrate. Yes. See? 
See? Now, I'm not advocating that we walk around and tickle our students, but everybody, when I touched you, like right here, you got so long hair. Now, lift you from here. Yes, that stays set. And it costs us some height, but what do you want? Are you trying to get healthy? Are you trying to get strong? Yeah, see? Good example. Good example. Watch. Before, she's relaxing. After, she's fortifying. And there we go. See? See? That just hurts, right? But now get organized. Pull it up. Yes! See? Now lift your heart. Do you see the diff? Mm -hmm. See? So relax down. Relax here. And now just lift your chest. Yeah, anybody can just lift their chest and jack their back. Mm -hmm. But if you chill out, get organized, pull this up and in. Yes, see how your tailbone shifted down and back? It's not a big move. You can't go as tight. Well, yeah. well, what do you want to do? Crank your back, hold your breath, and call it a good? Yeah. Or you wanna, are you trying to strengthen your back, your spine? Yeah. That's why I don't really like the cue and, and lift your hands to prove there's no weight there. Like, yeah. check it. Nobody breathes and all their shoulders jack up. Okay, again, this is top line dialogue for every pose. You can look down, forward, or up. The imperative is to keep the long, convex curve of your neck. So come down into your, your belly down Shavasana. Now notice here there's no, oh no, keep, I'm sorry. Go ahead and put your hands in place and, and relax here. And then just lift your chest. That, that's a way to dent it, not really get the muscles. Now chill out. Now pull up and in here. Yes, yes, yes. It's not so much squeezing the buns as it is pulling up in here. Although the buns will squeeze helping with that. But here's the idea. Now lift up your heart, lift up your chest, lift up your eyes. Don't hurt yourself, but just randomly look up to the ceiling. I'm not loving that because look at your neck. But, but stay like that. Now lift your heart. If you can look at the ceiling and keep the length of the back of your neck, that's good. But if you're just gonna crank it up and look at and fold the back of your neck, you could get hurt. Okay. It's sure not therapeutic. Again, everything is just mountain pose decorated. So you want, everybody again last time, take your right hand, put it on the back of your neck, identify where your thumb is on C7, T1, identify where your pinky is at the base of your skull. Do you feel that curve forward? Mm -hmm. Keep it, okay. keep it, maintain it, maintain it. You always wanna have it. Now, if you can go higher, and keep it, that's one thing, but this, this is a mess. Mm -hmm. Why would you want this? Yeah. You walked in that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's yoga, we're trying to lengthen. 